Edge Constrained Transform is a tool capable of rotating and scaling an edit mesh selection, while keeping it constrained to the connected and unselected edges. It is primarily used to adjust existing topology, without affecting the form significantly or at all. For example, if you wanted to align this edge loop at an angle, and would attempt to do this using Blender's native rotate tool, you would change the form significantly. With Edge Constrained Transform however, you can rotate the loop without affecting the form at all. The tool is keymapped to Alt-R by default, which can be changed in the add-on preferences. When rotating, various methods to perform the edge alignment are available. Direct Plane Intersection is the default, because it tends to produce the best results in most scenarios. You can use the mouse wheel or the 1 and 2 keys to scroll through all the alignment modes. You can see how some of the methods introduce bending, the more you rotate and especially on conical forms. Proximity is probably the most robust method, but due to the bending, it's used best for small rotation amounts. Mouse Deer Plane Intersection is unique, because it's the only alignment method that changes in behavior depending on how the mouse is positioned in relation to the selection. It's very similar to scaling in that way, and the recommended way to position your mouse is orthogonal to the selection. Note that if you started in a position that isn't ideal, you can always reset the transformation using the C key. Just like with Blender's transform tools, all transformation happens in view space by default. But unlike with the native rotate tool, it's very liberating to work with edge constrained rotation in view space because you can be sure the form is unaffected. And of course, the selection doesn't have to be straight, you can rotate something like this just as well. Now, oftentimes what you actually want with a selection like this, is to get it straight or flat again. And this would traditionally be pretty hard to do. Just aligning them doesn't work. And neither does just scaling them. But edge constrained scaling will work. And so, like for Blender's transform tools, you can switch to scaling using the S key. And back to rotate using R. Scaling is directional, which means, where your mouse is positioned matters. If you come at it from the bottom left side, it will scale and align like this, whereas if you approach from the bottom right, it looks like so. As you approach the transform origin, it will become increasingly hard to maintain the initial scale direction or to change it, without dramatic changes. To deal with this you can lock the direction using the Alt key. With the direction locked, you also can't scale past zero. And since a lot of the time you will actually want to scale exactly to zero, you can do that very quickly using the shift key without moving the mouse. This zero scaling works even from rotate mode, so you don't even have to switch. Note how zero scaling can behave very similar to rotation, and can be used for this purpose, as long as you want your selection to be straight. And so if you want this selection to be perfectly flat again, and aligned with the object, you need an axis lock on local Z, more on that later. If you transform a non-cyclic edge loop, you may notice that the tool draws green edges at the ends of your selection like this. This happens whenever there are multiple slide edges to choose from. You can toggle the end alignment using the E key, but the default choice should be already what you want in most cases. As indicated earlier, you can lock your rotation or scaling to one of the object's axes. To do so, just use the X, Y, or Z keys. You can clear any axis lock using the C key again, to return to a view-based transformation. Instead of using the axis keys, you can also use the middle mouse button to lock an axis. Also note how, to help you with picking the right axis, the tool will draw them in the transform origin, which itself is indicated with a yellow dot. If your selection contains multiple, separate edges or edge loops, 
the tool will automatically start in a mode using individual origins. You can toggle this using the Q key, and although it doesn't change the result drastically here, individual origins are almost always the better choice in scenarios like this. Individual origins also work for scaling, and the difference here is always significant. Now to emphasize, here are a few kinds of selections you can use for this tool. It's generally a good idea to stay in edge mode. And while verts are also supported, they have a tendency to also select faces in Blender, through a process known as selection flushing. Avoid selections like this, where multiple selected faces are next to each other. This is also to be avoided. Keep your edge selections separate from each other. Avoid crossovers. Now, if you look at this case, you can see how the transform origin is in the center, in the median location of all selected verts. If you change your pivot to active element, either here, or from the machine tools transform pi, the transform origin will be placed at the active element. And machine tools will treat edges at the end of a selection slightly differently. Usually the origin would be in the center of an active edge. But I think the chances are slim, that you actually want to rotate around the center of an edge at the end of a loop. Chances are, you want to rotate around the very end point, and so this special treatment of end edges, saves you from having to switch to vert mode, just to awkwardly make the last vert active. In addition to active element, you can also set your pivot to cursor. And while the direct plane intersection method struggles here, projected plane intersection works fine. Note how with the active element or the cursor as the chosen pivot, multiple selections don't use their individual origins now. You can still enable it though, but that changes the transformation. Now, here is a case where you can even rotate a face selection, because all this is, is a cyclic edge loop, without any selected edges crossing each other. With edges like these however, you will run into problems. That's because for some of the verts here, there are no edges to slide on on one side, and on the other side, the edges are pointing in directions that aren't really suitable. If you try to rotate the outer loop here, the tool will try to use the inner edges for alignment, which will look like this. And it doesn't really matter what alignment method you pick. Even though some may work better than others, they aren't the reason this fails, it's the lack of correct sliding edges that is the problem. What you can do however is pressing the F key, which will in addition to edges, also consider face alignment. In general though, I just suggest to avoid selections like these. Select edges, that actually can be aligned to other edges. Let's check out a more practical example. For instance, I want to even out the edges here a bit more. Aligning, rotating and scaling doesn't really work as all of these change the form, so you'd be left with sliding this into place manually, at worst on the vert level. Edge aligned rotation with the active element as the pivot just works. One of the most beautiful things about this tool is how careless you can be with the transformation and so how rarely you actually need the axis locks. And finally, for these edge loops here, I'm just going to straighten them by zero scaling. 